Who's in the house? Hello, welcome to Amos Seed and Feed Bible Study and our series titled Christian Alphabet. I'm very happy you joined us today. Today we'll be discussing E for example. At the end of this lesson, if you found it to be helpful, please like us and share with a friend or family member. And don't forget, add a comment because we would love to hear from you. And if you'd like to be notified when the next videos come out, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You'll be glad you did. After dinner one evening, when everything was quiet, we heard heavy footsteps in the back hall. I got up from a place and worked my way down the hall to see where the steps were coming from. As I peered around the corner, I see our daughter, a day about one and a half years old, wearing my work hat and my work boots, trying to walk down the hall. Clomp, clomp, clomp. She was trying to be like me. She had watched me wearing the hat and boots and every day as I left for work and as I returned from home. She was following my example. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 22. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that she should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance tells us, example, another word that's used is example, pattern, model, type, a visual form to be copied. No Webster's 1828 Dictionary of the American Language, a pattern, a copy, a model, that which is proposed to be imitated. And so Jesus set the example. He had suffered for us. He had actually died for us. And the example is for us to live like him. And in verse 22, it tells us how, with no sin. It also tells us no guile found in his mouth. We should be the same. But what is guile? In strong as exhaustive concordance, guile is deceit, slyness, trickery. Figuratively, like trapping an animal by baiting or by cunning. Noah Webster's 1828 Dictionary of the American Language says, Guile is craft, cunning, deceit, to disguise craftily. So as we find, those are the things we're not supposed to be like, and that's the example that Christ set. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9-13. through 13. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers, in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity, till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. What we find here is the Apostle Paul writing to his son in the faith, as another passage describes Timothy, who was a young man, but he accepted Christ under Paul, and he became the pastor of the local church that was established where he lived. And so Paul is giving him instruction, and he begins by saying, what I'm about to tell you is a worthy saying, which is faithful, and it should be accepted by you. Embrace it as your own. And he goes to describe that Paul and Timothy both suffer reproach, but it's because they trust in the living God. As all those that have Jesus as Savior, we are going to experience those things. But he goes on to say to Timothy, these things command and teach that we are going to suffer. But then he goes on further to say that let no man despise thy youth. Timothy was young. But he says, you're wise enough to be able to know what you're talking about, and we've actually discussed this before. But be thou an example to the believers. In other words, showing, not only telling them, but showing them what they're supposed to do in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till they come give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. So Timothy not only is going to teach, but he's going to be an example in those specific things that are listed, but also give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. That's going to be seen as well. Those are going to be examples that should be 
for all those that are around them as well. They should be reading the letters. They should be learning more about Christ. They should be learning to be an example themselves. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 15 and 17. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together with me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for an example. So the encouragement here in this passage of Scripture for the Philippians is to be like-minded and to live like-minded. And if we're not, let God reveal that unto us so that we can make the necessary changes so that we are perfect and like-minded together. And then, nevertheless, whereunto we have attained, let us walk by the same rule. In other words, all of us should have the same mindset. All of us should have the same walk. Because we're using the same example, Jesus Christ. And in verse 17, brothers, be followers together with me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. So in other words, not just what people say, but how are they living their lives? That's the example, and that is the measure. It's through their example. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5-9. through 9. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. The Thessalonians lived in a culture that was steeped heavily in gods, little g gods, and they had the worship of those in sacrifice and in deeds and in prayers and little idols in their house, and everything that they did revolved around this kind of worship with multiple gods. But Paul came on the scene, and he led many to Christ. And their lives changed. They began to follow Paul and how he lived, both in word and deed. And in verse 7, it goes on to explain that you were in samples to all those in Macedonia and Achaia. In other words, their example demonstrated that there was something different. They were no longer doing what a typical Thessalonian would do with the little g-gods. And that's found in verse 9. For they themselves show to us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and ye turned to, to God, Jehovah God, from idols to serve the living and true God. So in other words, their lives changed to where not only in word, but also in how they lived their lives, demonstrated that they no longer were of the world, but of Christ. And here's the interesting thing in verse 8 that it wasn't only where they lived, but everywhere they went, their example was demonstrated. Because it goes on to say, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. Whether in business travels or in family travels, they didn't need to speak anything. Their example by itself demonstrated there was something different. They had Christ as their Savior. That example is so extremely important. Not all examples are good examples. By demonstration, Jude chapter 1, verse 7, Even the Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them is like in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So as you see here, this is another example that is explained in the New Testament, which is actually echoed in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So, as a warning, God has set up examples. 
that has an example of Sodom and Gomorrah. Many people claim that this is hate speech because we talk about sin and we talk about other things that people are doing. and But it's not because we hate, it's because we love. Because we have an example here that Sodom and Gomorrah was burnt to the ground. It was nothing more than ashes. Not one single person who was living in that town survived, except for those that the angel had carried out. And that was Abraham's nephew, Lot, and his two daughters. And that was it. Even his wife turned back to look and just turned into a pillar of salt. It's a warning to us. We don't want to live that kind of life. We may live and die of natural causes, but in the end, we're still going to be suffering for our ungodliness if we, if we choose to live in the wrong example. So as we find in these passages of Scripture, we have the example of godliness that is a demonstration of who we are through Christ. And if we live that, it's a powerful mechanism so that our lives itself, we may be an example to someone of Christ and not even realize it. That's why it's so important. Yes, speak to them about Christ if we have an opportunity. If we know that they're looking, if they know that they're searching, yes. But if they're not, or we don't have the understanding that someone's watching, we can be that example anyway because we're living the right life. So here's the question. What kind of example do you want to be? I have several people that told me over the years that they don't want to be an example. They don't want anybody to watch them. They don't want anybody to take the demonstration of what they do as, as anything. But the reality is, as we just found from these passages, we are an example regardless. Whether we want to be or not, we are going to be either a good example or a bad example. Which are we going to choose? Think on these things.